Hi everyone, welcome to Ask Tom TV. Today we're going to talk about hierarchies. A question came in regarding how to do running totals against a hierarchy. To, to help set the scene, let's have a look at what the actual requirement was. So you can see what we had was we had an employee table and we had someone's salary and we wanted to know what their running total was. So let's say we got John, he's the uh, top dog, he's, he's the highest person in our organization and Sue reports to him and underneath Sue we have Jane and we have Bill. Now each of them have a salary, so Bill's salary is $10, Jane's is $10, Sue's is $20 and John's is $30 because he's the CEO. So what we want to do is a, a hierarchical total. So Bill's is obviously reports to no one, neither does Jane, but Sue's total is her salary plus those underneath her and John, similarly, his total is the, effectively the total of everyone in the entire organization. So that's what we wanted to achieve. The question is, how could we do it with some SQL and keep those totals up to date as we went? So let's have a look, see, and see how we do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table called emp as a copy of scott.emp. And then what we'll do, we'll have a look and see what's in there. And just looks up the normal M table, as you can see. So now let's add a column. I'll just take them. Add salary responsible for. The total amount of salary you're responsible for, and that's going to be a number as well. So let's have a look at, for example, what the hierarchy would look like for a given employee, say, uh, employee 7566. So I'll use LPAD to pump it out a little bit, to nest it out a bit. Standard connect by query, connect by prior emp node equals manager, and we'll start with employee 7566. And then we can see 7566 has 7788 reporting to him and so forth, and there's the salaries for each of those people. So I could easily change that query just by doing select sum of salary from employee. Once again, connecting by in the same way, starting with the employee number, the same so. And rather than having the hierarchy now, I get the total salary for that person plus everyone underneath him. In this case, it's 10,875. So armed with that knowledge, I can do a simple update now, correlated update, update the employee table, set our new column salary responsible for, and just the same query we had there, but now it's a correlated subquery. So sum of the salary from the employee table, connect by as before, and this time the employee number we start with will be uh, the e.emp node from the outer query. So effectively we're going to run that hierarchy query for each row in the actual um, table. So that's been done. Let's have a look at our data. And as you can see, we have that sale of responsibility for, and that's been updated. And you can see King is at the top of the organization. He's got $29,000. So that's all well and good. We've now got the data updated. The question is, how do we keep that data updated in real time? We can't just once a month go and update our salaries because the data will be wrong. How are we going to get that data up to date in real time? Well, the obvious thing sounds to be like use a trigger. Let's explore how we do that using a trigger. Create a replace trigger TRG. It's going to be after insert, delete, or update, and obviously it's going to be for each individual row. Now I'll cut and paste a bit of stuff here to save us some of the typing. And you can actually see what we're going to do is, if we're inserting and updating, then obviously we need to know about the new values. And if we're deleting or updating, we also need to know about the old values. So what I'm doing is the exact same query as before, but rather than doing the correlated update, I'm using the bind value of new to actually see what's going on inside there. So there's our trigger, let's see if it compiles. And now let's try one of our updates. So we'll do update employee. Let's reduce the salary to zero for employee 7369. And as you can see, we get the familiar error, the mutating table error. Now that should be hopefully something you don't see that often, but it makes a lot of sense. You can't add a row level trigger, run an update or any kind of DML on the table that you actually have the trigger on. Because in the middle of a for each row trigger, the table is almost indeterminate. A row is halfway through being updated. So that's why you're not allowed to actually touch it. 
So rather than just try to leap into, you know, trying to solve that problem right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a much simpler trigger, which is just for one row. I'm going to hard code the row in there, and I'm going to do it at statement level just to get around the mutating table issue for the time being, just to explore whether even the logic or philosophy of my trigger is going to be correct. So I create a replace trigger after insert or update or delete. This time, no row level trigger. I'm just doing it at statement level, just enough to actually update this one particular row for 7369. So we're going to give that a go. I've pasted the stuff in once again just to make it a little bit faster. Now I'll run my update again. So update employee, set the salary equals zero where emp no equals 7369. And let's see what happens. I've got problems again. Even though I haven't got a mutating table anymore because I'm no longer doing for each row, of course, I'm actually updating the same table. So every time I update, I fire the trigger, which doesn't update, which fires the trigger. And as you can see, the very top message there is the maximum number of recursive SQL levels has been exceeded. So the trigger just ran and ran and ran and just nested itself deeper and deeper and deeper. And eventually Oracle said, look, we can't do this forever. We're going to run out of something, memory or something. So it simply blew us up and said, that's not going to work. So I'll try to work around that by making sure that when we're in the recursive updates, we don't actually fire that trigger off again. The way we can do that is with a package variable. So let's explore how we do that. Just once again to reinforce, we're not looking at the full solution yet, just trying to isolate whether our logic, our philosophy of doing this hierarchical update is going to work. So what I'll do is I'll create or replace a package called mpkg. That's just going to hold a nice global variable for us. And what we'll do is we'll call it the trigger level, it's just an integer, and every time we go into the trigger, we'll bump that up. Well, much like putting something on a stack. So what I'll do is I'll now replace my trigger. Um, all I'm really changing now is you'll see, I'm going to simply say only fire the updates if the trigger level is one. And every time we enter the trigger, we'll bump up the trigger level, and every time we're finished with the trigger, we'll drop down the trigger level. Now we'll run our update. Update employee. Set the salary to zero, where the employee number equals 7365. And this time we had success. Well, that's cool. Let's have a look at what's in our table. And as you can see, the salary for 7369 Smith has been set to zero. But I'm looking at the salary for, say, Jones, 10875. Now, I know Smith reports up to Jones if I follow the hierarchy there. So his 10875 should have gone down a bit. And that's really when the penny drops, that just because you update one row doesn't mean that's the only row you have to update. Every single person above that employee in the hierarchy might need to be altered as well. What that means is we've got a much more complicated scenario on our hands here. We don't know how many rows we need to update in that table just by a single row DML. What that means is we have to keep a track of not just the row we updated, but also every possible parent row of that all the way up the hierarchy and then, because of the mutating table issue, do all that work in an after statement level trigger. It's actually not a trivial problem to solve. So let's now explore that and see how we code it up. So I'll roll back my changes first, so we get a nice clean table. Now what we'll do is I'll create a type called employee listing. It's a table of integers. What this is going to be is a record of all the employee numbers that we might need to touch as part of this activity. I'll drop my trigger because I'm going to recreate it as a compound trigger. So first I'll create or replace the trigger. This time it's not before or after, it's for, for insert or update or delete of the employee table. And it's a compound trigger. Now what we'll do is we'll have a look at bits and pieces of code as we go. First thing I'm going to store is a list of all the child indexes I update. So effectively, each one I build, each time, each one that comes in, because don't forget, updates and deletes might in fact affect more than one row. I'm going to store them in my array called lchildrdx. I'm also going to store a list of all the employees affected in my all keys structure, which is based on that type employee list. The reason I'm doing it in a nested table as opposed to just an associative array is I'm going to run one queries on that later using the table clause, and we'll see that as we go. So what I'll do now is, after each row is affected, I'm going to 
If the trigger level is one, just like before, we don't want to fire off recursive queries. If it's inserting, I'll store it in child IDX, the new value. If it's updating, I'll store both the new and the old. Because if I update someone's manager to be from one person to another, we actually might need to change that. And I'll also, if it's deleting, just store the old value as well. So that's what I'll do just for each row, recording the information in an array to avoid the mutating table problem that's going to come along later on. All the magic is going to have to occur in the after statement trigger. So let's have a look at the after statement part of this compound trigger. Here's the first part. Once again, only if the trigger level is one, I'm going to increment my trigger level. Then I'm going to lock the entire table in exclusive mode because I don't really know how many rows I'm about to update. If I, if one person sits at the very bottom of the hierarchy, it's potentially feasible I'll have to update every single row in the table. So I'm going to lock the table just for the purpose of this to make sure I've got a nice consistent view of the data. Now I'm going to loop around my list of child elements and for each one I'm going to find all the people in the hierarchy that report above him because they are all people that will potentially need to be able to update it. So every single person might be updated, just be this one row. I'm going to add them to my all keys table by using the extend keyword and then adding them to the all keys as we go. That way I've looped around all the rows that were updated by the DML and then added all the rows plus all the parent rows into my structure called all keys. And if we continue on down through the trigger, we've got more. Now that we've got it all stored in all keys, what we're going to do is we're going to run a query against all keys using select distinct column value from table all keys and now do our familiar update the correlated update you can see there on line 67 update amp set Sally responsible for we're doing a select sum for every single row that came out of our all keys structure at the end of it we drop our trigger level down by one which resets our mutating table and recursive updates and then we're all done so it's a fairly hefty size trigger. All right, let's finish it off, see if it compiles. Okay, having done all this, now let's turn server output on because we put some DBMS outputs in there. And now let's run our update. Okay, so update the employee set the salary equals zero. Our familiar update where employee equals 7369. You can see what's actually gone on here. We actually did an update of 7369 and our debugging output says we directly affected 7369 but as a result, that could affect the following four keys as well. So they're all been stored, and then for each single one of them, we've done a reset in the total using our correlated update. Having done that, let's do a select start from our employee table and see if our results look sound. Well, we can see the salary was reduced to zero for 7369, and we can look along 7566 Jones, he went from 10875 to 10075. So there's a degree of confidence there that our hierarchy system is actually being updated correctly. Please test out my results and see if you agree. So as you can see, hierarchical totals on the fly is actually a pretty complicated problem to solve. This one came in through Ask Tom on a related kind of set of tables, so I thought you'd find it interesting. That's it for this episode of Ask Tom. Hopefully there wasn't too much code for you, and we'll see you all again next time. Take it easy.